Lesser Light by Matthew Draper Chapter 13 Walking into the church offices was a daily part of my old routine. It felt both natural and surreal to be revisiting those feelings. It had been a while. We used to gather here for prayer sessions most days when we were volunteering. A mix of us, but always Sebastian, Oscar and me. I remembered Morgan teaching us to pray in the angelic language. Allow the syllables to babble out of you. My tongue would sometimes twist into the sounds even now. Especially if I felt stressed or anxious. Repeated diphthong sounds with surprised consonants. You could never be 100% sure the words you were saying were an expression of the mood you were in and not an ancient curse or call. All of the hallways here were decorated in dull colours, nothing bright. It was designed to ground you on earth as you thought about heaven. Or at least, that's how I understood the colour tones. Advertisements for upcoming events and services were pinned to boards along the corridor. I wondered who still attended from our era and wished I could let them know they were following a fraudster who was quite literally banking on their beliefs. Speaking of Morgan... His office was up ahead, with a slider switched to out. Empty. I turned the doorknob. Thankfully, it was unlocked. Far too trusting for an organisation which had recently had a rock thrown through their stained glass. Chairs, a desk, a giant pinboard covered in members' names with post-it notes stuck beside them. Everything was familiar, and yet changed. What if he had thrown out the old files by now? I used my phone as a torch, the natural light of the winter sun slowly dimming outside the office windows. Desk, computers, cabinets. I pulled drawers open and slammed them closed. Stationery rattled in one. Another held organisational diaries and paperwork for appointments and meetings. I dug through a pile of future talk outlines, leading from Christmas to Easter. I sat on a leather-backed swivel chair and spun in place. I had been spinning in place for years. Back to work. The metal filing cabinet drawers creaked and banged as I opened and closed them, flicking through green folders of licensing, external bookings and accounts. Aha! Here in the bottom drawer, right at the back, Packed away and untouched for years. Files with our names on. Lizzie, Harry, Sebastian, Oscar. I unclipped Oscar's personal file and slid it out of the drawer, crouching down beside the desk. On the first page was a photo of my old friend, taken from his Facebook profile. Captured on camera, he looked his usual goofy self and was mugging off the photographer. He was never fully comfortable with his appearance and with the way he took up space in every room. He was theatrical in public, but wanted to be private and unobserved in private. He had a booming voice, even when he tried to whisper jokes to friends during church services. Despite the discomfort at being photographed, I recognised the joy within him, which I had always known. He carried warmth with him, Pockets full of it. His hugs were legendary. Proper Santa hugs with arms fully wrapped around you as he laughed into the top of your head. I could not believe we had lost him. Hurriedly, I skipped through files about his flaws, family and powers until I found the final two pages of the folder, stapled together. There was a photocopy of his death certificate and notes by a doctor who had answered questions at the inquest into Oscar's death. These notes should never have become public. I had a feeling I knew who had smuggled them out of the medical system. 
Dr. Barnabas. Through the frosted glass door, I noticed a corridor light switch on, then a closer light, flooding the office. Shit, I was going to be found here. I yanked the stapled pages free of the file, folded them up and shoved them in my pocket, throwing the rest of Oscar's details back into the drawer and shutting it quickly. As I heard footsteps approach and the sound of someone talking on the phone, I scrambled into the footwell of the desk, pulling my knees inside under my coat, just moments before the door to the office swung open. I saw a pair of smart shoes enter the room and heard a murmur of conversation coming through the phone. The owner of the polished shoes trudged past the desk, across to the same cabinet I had just closed. Whoever it was did not open the bottom drawer, so he didn't see Oscar's papers sprawling across the top of the other files. When he spoke, his voice was distinct and clipped. Morgan. I thought he was here too. On Christmas Day, after the service, after everyone had gone home, I saw him. He was so large and so present. He filled the whole height of the church. Frightened me. Terrified me. But he's not real. He sounded as though he was convincing himself as much as the person on the other end of the phone. The other voice interrupted, protested, a high-pitched bubble of phone babble. The shoes squeaked around the desk as Morgan argued. You cannot bring back something that was never there. You kids did enough damage trying to release him when you were here. The voice interrupted again, and Morgan began to lose his call. I'm not responsible for what you lot chose to believe. Whatever you unleashed was on you. Can you leave it where it was? A drawer opened, diary removed, and pages turned. Listen, Sebastian, I'm cancelling all my plans to come to the wedding myself. Speak to me before you do anything stupid. But if you are going to do this, let me record it for my podcast. The drawer closed, and Morgan carried the diary out of the room, still talking. Maybe we can combine the two brands. As the door swung shut behind him, I let out a breath. It was time to go. I crept out the office and down the corridor. I could hear him closing doors ahead of me and only move forward each time he had walked away. Darkness engulfed the hallway. I counted to a hundred to give Morgan time to leave the grounds before scurrying down the stairs and letting myself out of the back door. The automated locks beeped back into place behind me. I glanced up at the broken image of Gabriel as I passed. The stained glass was inky now without the sun. Turning away, I fully bumped into a shadowy figure. Hey, hi, what? Wait. Morgan was shocked to see me there. I hadn't set foot on the grounds in years, but here I was lurking in the dark. Harry, what are you doing here? He had just hung up on Sebastian, and it must have seemed as though old students were popping out of the woodwork. I stepped back and... Gave him an awkward wave. Uh, hi Morgan. Happy Christmas and things. Happy Christmas to you. He was still confused. What are you doing here? I, uh, uh, the folded up papers in my pocket were jutting into my thigh, screaming out as stolen goods. I came to visit Oscar sometimes, I lied. Not that he's here. I know where he is, but I come here. Morgan considered my face quizzically, as if he were about to demand some kind of proof. He sighed instead. Tragedy, he said, resigned. A tragedy. Yeah, the worst. I didn't ask why, if it was such a tragedy, he had gone poking into Oscar's affairs and kept a copy of his death certificate secured in his office. I had not yet studied the details of the report into his death. What happened to Gabriel? I nodded towards the broken window. Morgan looked up at the jagged edge of the cracked glass, then suddenly, as if possessed, grabbed my wrist and hissed at me. Don't mess with him. It's enough what Sebastian is doing. You can't see something that isn't there. You've been seeing him? Also, what is Sebastian doing? Morgan shook his head, releasing me. Sebastian has... 
he thinks he's caused to release him again. After everything, you know, everything, we stop talking about him for a while. Morgan forced his fearful frown away. It was replaced with his usual plastic smile. We aren't about that, Harry. We are focused on the Earth now. You would love what I teach about the world we live in. Green grass, blue sky, you'd love it. Finally, after all the years I had known him, he looked pathetic to me. I was amazed any of us had followed him, listened to his teaching, or tried to imitate his life as our own. I shrugged past him and started back towards my car. Morgan called out as I walked away. Will you subscribe to my podcast? Lesser Light is an online event. Head to lesserlight.blog to join in the comment section or share this story on Facebook, Twitter, Hive or your favourite social media platform. The Lesser Light paperback is available from lulu.com or other booksellers or you can download the ebook now. But remember, no spoilers until New Year's Day. The story is fictional, but if the elements about trauma, cults or recovery have affected you, you can find helplines at lesserlight.blog.